This is just a quick little video to announce that I'm starting The Hand of Oberon, which is uh, book four in the Chronicles of Amber series by Roger Zelazny. And uh, this should be no surprise to anyone who's been following this channel all along. I've been working my way through this series. Uh, and I, as I've said before, I picked this up at a used bookstore here. Uh, it's Fantasy Masterworks edition, which is the first five books in the Chronicles of Amber series all in one volume. Uh, first five books are, according to Wikipedia, uh, form one cycle, the Corwin cycle. So the first five books form what I'm led to believe is one continuous story, which means that I'm, I'm hoping by the time I get done to the end of this, it will have a satisfying payoff because uh, at the moment all I have is this volume here. And I'm, I'm living out in uh, Vietnam, so it's a little bit difficult to stumble upon books uh, or to stumble upon specific books, which, which is to say that after I finish these five books, I don't anticipate being able to find the rest of the series anytime soon. Anyways, en enough of me rambling. Uh, I just finished Sign of the Unicorn, number th three book, the third book in the series. So now on to the fourth book in the series. This is all one volume here, but they were originally published separately in the 1970s before being collected into one volume. The Hand of Oberon was originally published in 1976, I believe, and it makes up this part of the Fantasy Masterwork edition, which is from page... what are the page numbers here? Well, no page numbers on the first couple pages. Uh, page 496 to page 640. And uh, I mentioned in my last video about the Chronicles of Amber that I'm really getting into this series and finding myself hooked on it. So I anticipate that I'll be reading this through relatively quickly. At the same time, I do have some other reading materials I'm juggling. I've actually got like about seven books that I'm tech that are technically on my reading list, meaning books I've started yet but not finished. But the books that I'm trying to get done uh, sooner rather than later are this one, Don Quixote, which I actually did finish a couple weeks ago. But I'm trying to reread at least some of it before I review it. So this bookmark here is actually me rereading it because the part one. I'll talk about this maybe when I review Don Quixote properly, but it took me forever to finish this book. So this part one I read like three years ago, <laughs> and so now I'm trying to reread that section. Uh, and then the other one as well, uh, Chomsky's Universal Grammar, which I finished but have been trying to reread the beginning parts of it before I film a review. So between rereading parts of these books in preparation for a review, uh, and then working on this book, and then a couple other books that are, are halfway th finished in my apartment. Uh, I'm, who knows? Who knows? But uh, I, I don't anticipate it will take me all that long. I, I am turning to this series more and more for, for pleasure reading. Uh, so, I, you know, if I get bored on an afternoon, I'll probably turn to this sooner than Don Quixote. I have... This is a little bit of a... A little bit of a, what's the word, digression. But I, I have on this blog, my, my blog, uh, started out keeping track of which books I've started and finished. So I, I put started The Hand of Oberon by Roger Zelazny. I actually started doing this on the blog a couple of years before doing it on YouTube. So these YouTube videos where I, I announced I started a book are an extension of, of what I've been doing on the blog for a couple of years. And what I do is I put in the title and I announce I started it, and then just to have something visually appealing, I of course will go to the internet and get some cover art for the book. And so naturally before doing this, I did a Google image search for this book on all the various cover art, and there is a lot, 
uh, the book has obviously been through several printings, um, which I don't know actually. Is this a lot or isn't it a lot? I mean, on the one hand, it was originally published way back in 1976. On the other hand, that was like only 1976, right? It's not like this is a classic that has been around for hundreds of years, and yet there's so much different cover art that uh, through the years, I, I guess it's been printed by a number of different people over a number of different times. Um, the cover art for this series in general, I've been finding, tends to be rather vague. Uh, like, you know, this is a perfect example. What is this book about, huh? How, how would you know from this cover art? So, when I'm choosing something for the blog, I try and choose something that has a little bit of pictures, maybe some characters, and I thought, this one, no, not that one, clicked on the wrong one. This one, uh, looked like it had, was visually appeal appealing, kind of clear shapes, clear characters, clear architecture in the background. Uh, this actually is not the cover art to the print edition. I don't know if you can read that, but this is a cover art to the audio. So like if you click on the this here, this will... Yeah, this will take you to the Amazon page where this is a cover art for the audio CD from 2011, apparently. But, uh, you know, when, I, when I'm choosing just uh, image for the blog, I figure, even though that's the image for the audiobook, it's close enough. But, th this is why I'm showing you this, is because I didn't notice this fine print until after I had uploaded it. And by the way, uh, spoilers, so stop watching the video here if you don't want spoilers. But, I read this... And it says, Brand's renegade Prince of Amber now controls the Jewel of Judgment and must be stopped be before he can reshape the universe to his whim. And that was on the cover art. And I read that and I thought, oh, I, I actually, I didn't want to know that because when, when, we left off at the end of the last book. It wasn't clear that Brand was going to be the antagonist. It looked like maybe Brand was going to be allied with Corwin, uh, or was going to be a wild card or something. Um, so this here on the cover art that Brand is now the antagonist and that he somehow gets the Jewel of Judgment, which at the end of the previous book was in control of Corwin. Uh, that's all a spoiler, which I would have been happier not knowing. And I, su I suppose, you know, it is partly my fault for searching around for images on Google. You know, I mean, if, if you want to be spoiler free, you just have to stay off the internet completely. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, if I was somebody who had just purchased this audiobook and didn't know any better, this, this is the cover art on the audiobook. So... It's not it's not a place where you would expect to find plot spoilers like that. But yeah, anyways, before even going into this book, I guess I've I've spoiled some of it for myself. It looks like Brand is going to turn into the antagonist in this book. In the, in the previous book, Corwin had saved him. Um. So yeah. Uh, point being, I guess I have unintentionally spoil part of this book for me. I, I now know that uh, Brand is going to be the antagonist. He's somehow going to get the Jewel of Judgment. Um, will that spoil my enjoyment of the book? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, there, there's that whole debate about whether spoilers matter, etc. Uh, I was trying to get into this book a little bit earlier this afternoon, and I've read four pages so far, and it seems exactly like everything else in the series, meaning uh, they're, they're, in the, they're in the real amber, and they, they find like the real pattern, uh, and it's a little bit 
hard for me to visualize or a little bit confusing exactly what's going on, which has been true of this series all the way through. Um, but at the same time, it does seem really interesting. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now, and I'm going to continue reading this and then come back with a full review once I've finished.